It's now been over 50 years since this iconic photo was taken. Known as the Blue Marble, or simply as the Whole Earth, it's a photo with an impressive legacy. It's been shared around the world millions of times and is used as a symbol for environmental movements and to symbolize our fragility on the planet Earth. I thought it could be fun to look at this photo as if we were seeing it for the first time in one of our brand new modern telescopes. We could think about whether we can tell that this planet hosts life and talk about why this photo is so iconic. This famous photo was taken by one of the crew of Apollo 17, the last mission to land humans on the moon in 1972. We aren't exactly certain which one took it, but it was probably a guy called Ron Evans, because on the audio recordings of the mission, he asks for the camera and calls out the frame number of this image. The camera they used was called a Hasselblad 500, and they used a 250 millimeter lens, and it was not easy to take good images with it, mostly because it had no viewfinder. So they just had to point and click. This was to reduce the amount of glass on board the rocket because it's both heavy and breakable. You do not want broken glass flying around in space. NASA and the astronauts knew they would have the chance to capture the whole Earth lit up like this. And the photo was on their agenda. Timings had to work out perfectly. Well, you need to land on the moon when lots of sunlight is hitting the lunar surface. But the trajectory of Apollo 17 worked out so that just after launch, the whole Earth was being bathed in sunlight too, allowing for this fully lit image to be captured. Since there was no viewfinder, every photo was scheduled and the astronauts had a list of settings for the camera for each photo. So for this one, they knew they would be on their way to the moon, about 21,000 miles from Earth, and they knew which settings to use to hopefully get a photo in focus. So they just applied those settings, pointed at the Earth and shot. For the whole Earth, there are actually a few photos taken of the exact same thing, but this is the one that's most often shared. Although it's worth noting that it is cropped and rotated from the original, which you can see right here. In this original, the Earth is off in the corner and it's actually the other way up. The image was only developed when the astronauts returned to Earth because they couldn't send it digitally. And since it was a film camera, just like every camera on the mission, it had to be developed by hand in Houston. If we were seeing this image for the first time today, and I was talking about it as something fresh off of something like JWST, then there are loads of interesting things that I'd wanna point out. We can start with the impressive selection of clouds, including a massive cyclone up near the Indian Ocean. We can also see pretty much the whole African continent, including the Madagascan island. And on that continent, we can even pick out details like lakes, desert land, and greenery too. This was also the very first time a human had imaged the southern polar ice cap. So that's pretty awesome. Other Apollo missions before this had imaged Earth, and I will talk about some of those images shortly, because some of them are also very famous. But this is the first time that the trajectory had allowed them to capture Antarctica. We can also see parts of South Asia up near the cyclone I mentioned earlier. And there's also pretty good evidence for liquid water on the planet's surface. One interesting thing is that we can't see any stars in the background of the image, which you might expect when imaging a planet hanging in space, especially when an astronaut also in space took the image. This is purely an exposure thing. The Earth would have looked super bright to the astronauts and the background stars much fainter. So the camera shutter would only have been open for a short amount of time to capture the Earth. And this wasn't long enough for any stars to be captured in the image. If the shutter was left open longer, then enough light would have entered the camera to make the stars visible. But then so much Earth light would have entered that the planet would have been an overexposed mess and would have just ended up as a bright white circle. Not as inspiring as what we did get. Thinking about it now, one stunning thing about this image is how there's nothing like the Earth out there that we can currently image. So this is really the only planet that A, looks like this, and B, we can see in enough detail to make out weather and individual land masses. We didn't know about any other planets around other stars when this photo was taken, but now we know of thousands of them, and there are millions and millions more just waiting to be discovered. Some might look like the Earth, but they're far too small and far too far away. So the best images we have of any of them are just fuzzy blobs for now. For me, that's part of the beauty of this image too, the uniqueness of the subject. That said, if life forms on some distant exoplanet were imaging the Earth like this, or even just had access to this one photo, 
would they be able to tell there was life on this planet? Assuming they'd previously discovered our planet using some technique like seeing us transit our star or seeing the sun wobble as we orbit, they might be interested in our planet. Since our sun is pretty stable and doesn't send too many disastrous flares our way and we are in the habitable zone, so would they know there was life here? Well, probably, I think. Here's how they could at least have a good guess that there's life on our little blue marble. The place to start is our atmosphere. Assuming that alongside this photo, they had a spectrum of our planet, then they would see a lot of oxygen in the atmosphere. This is a gas that likes to stick to other molecules. So in nature, it's relatively rare to see it floating around on its own. Unless, that is, there are lots of living things breaking down those compounds and releasing the naked oxygen into the atmosphere. On Earth, we have lots of plants to thank for that. So these alien scientists might be able to deduce something is alive down here by the chemicals in our atmosphere. Admittedly, oxygen alone isn't enough to prove life, but other compounds like carbon dioxide, nitrogen, nitrous oxide, and also methane are hard to produce and retain naturally. And life is one of the easy ways to have an abundance of these things in an atmosphere. So seeing all of them would be another clue. Only the life on Earth keeps our chemistry off kilter enough to have all of them around. It's not direct evidence, but it's a great clue. And you can bet that we would get excited if we saw all of these signs on an exoplanet that we were looking at. Another big clue would be all of the radio leakage coming from Earth. For a pretty long time now, we've been sending radio signals into space, mostly by accident. So depending on how far away these aliens are, they might be able to hear our signals and songs as well as see our planet. Okay, but assuming they just had images, could they tell there was life on Earth? Well, in the blue marble shot, we can see lots of green on the surface, which again is a fairly rare thing to see in lifeless nature. That could well be a big clue for life. If they could see the dark side of Earth too, i.e. the night side, then they would still see lots of light being emitted from our many big cities. They might guess that this is due to an intelligent civilization making artificial light. Or they might also conclude it's some sort of bioluminescence from some funky sea life or microbes. Either way, it would be good evidence for life. If they had even better imaging, they might be able to map out some of our cities or urban areas, and they are certainly pretty hard to explain without life. So yeah, there are a bunch of ways that aliens could detect us on our little blue island in space. And that can be both exciting and terrifying to think about. What I want to talk about now is why this photo in particular has become so famous, so enduring and so iconic. Why is the most enduring thing of the Apollo 17 mission a photo of the Earth and not the shots of the lunar surface that they captured while they were there? It's not the first photo of the whole Earth we ever saw or even the first photo of Earth ever taken by an astronaut. For example, the famous Earthrise photo here was taken by Apollo 8 astronaut William Anders in 1968 four years before the blue marble. I'll put some other Earth images that preceded blue marble on the screen now. The first image of Earth from orbit was in 1959 and was this lovely smudge taken by the Explorer 6 satellite. Lunar Orbiter 1 took the first image of Earth from another astronomical object in 1966, in this one that's reminiscent of Earthrise. Then the Dodge mission took this one that really is the whole Earth, just like blue marble. This one though wasn't taken in one go, but more like an old school TV, it's scanned in rows over time, hence all of the horizontal lines on this image. ATS-3 then took another full earth, but this time in full color. The difference between these and blue marble is people. Lots of us like the blue marble because of the human story that goes with it. A person took that photo while hurtling away from our home, and we somehow feel that in the photo. Other images of Earth include this sleepy crescent Earth taken by Apollo 4. This really cool one that's actually kind of shocking because, well, it's Venus, it's, it's not the Earth. But the most surprising one for me is this one from Zond 7. This was a Soviet satellite that orbited the moon and took this whole Earth image in August 1969, three years before Blue Marble. But we just never hear about this image because it's Russian and maybe because no human took it either. I'll leave you with this comparison between Blue Marble itself and a shot from the Discover Epic satellite, with 50 years separating the two images. See if you can spot any differences between the two. 
I think there might be slightly less greenery here and maybe more desertification. But otherwise, I can't see too many differences, including around the ice cap. It's hard to see visible differences. But remember, this is just two snapshots on two particular days. There is also a slight difference in resolution because the original blue marble was taken from about 21,000 miles away, while the Discover photo was taken from about a million miles away. While we look at this, I'll give you my thoughts on why blue marble is such a special photo. I think it's such a hard photo to reproduce. Even nowadays, when we have access to photos of everything in an instant, new photos of the earth, taken by a human in a tin can are still incredibly rare. Since this image was taken, no human has been far enough from Earth to even attempt taking a photo of the whole disk. And composites from satellites just aren't the same. They're often stitched together with mismatched clouds, lighting and weather, and they just don't feel as special. This one benefits from a unique combination of timeline, quality and perspective and it inspired a whole generation of stargazers, and it continues to inspire many, many people. Hopefully, the forthcoming Artemis II mission could give us a new blue marble, taken by a future astronaut who will again inspire a whole new generation, the Artemis generation, and we'll have a new story to think about as we look up at the night sky. If you want to see an even more detailed discussion about this photo, I was recently on a show dedicated entirely to it, so I'll link that in the description if you want to check it out. Please consider subscribing if you had fun and leave me a comment to let me know you made it this far. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!